recording so I can just edit this bit out. And go on to Word. And I'm actually going to take a picture of this so I don't. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, yeah. Well, you know one of them because I've told you when we did it after the old the other video, but yeah. the others well, are going to be. Forgotten, so anyway, oh, time to redo the intro. Hello, and welcome back to another video. Last time we did our least favorite, uh, no, sorry, our favorite Pokemon of our least favorite generations. My my fa least favorite being five, Max's being four. Um. And now we're going to do our least favourite Pokemon of our least favourite generation. This was not difficult for me at all. Um, the only difficult part for this for me was uh, deciding who should be dishonourable mentions and who should actually be on the list. I had a little trouble, but it wasn't so much choosing the Pokemon. It was like having a specific order because yeah. I pretty much like them around the same amount. Yeah. Um, so, do you have any dishonorable mentions? Yeah, I have three. Okay. Um, Spiritomb. That's Gen 5. No, it's not. It's Gen 4. Cynthia has one. Oh, no, sorry. I was... Yeah, I got Spiritomb mixed up with Cofagriga. Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Spiritomb, it's okay. It's not the best design. But it does have some redeemable qualities. Yeah. So that's um, Hippowdon. Um, Hippopotas is cute as hell. Yeah. I really like Hippopotas. But Hippowdon is just a bigger, uglier Hippopotas. I think Hippowdon, it holds a special place in my heart. Because it is one of the few Pokemon that will legitimately troll people. Because its female variant could easily be uh, mistaken for a shiny. Mm. And for that, it holds a special place in my heart because how many people would have seen a female Hippowdon and just oh, and they'd have thought it was a shiny? Mm. And my last one is her ugly. Okay, I guess obvious choices, obvious. Yeah. But I can't. I, Proggy is one of those Pokemon that's like, I don't like it, but I also don't dislike it. I don't hate Proggy, but it is definitely in my list of top 10 worst Gen 4 Pokemon. Yeah, it, it didn't quite do that it, next. I do uh, my it. list of uh, Gen 4 Pokemon, and you do your list of Gen 5 Pokemon. Hmm. Um, anyway, my dishonorable mentions. Seismitoad. It's ugly, but there are uglier Pokemon on this list. Moractus. I love Seismitoad. So that's, that's already triggered me. Yeah. I like Seismitoad, like a lot, so it's pretty it's good. It's ugly. Anyway, but it's very useful. It's boring a, it's AF. A... But boring is not good enough to make it onto my list. Swana. Boring design, shitty typing. And the fact that you have to go out pre... I think you actually have, it's actually decently... For what it is, it's actually decently difficult to get it, even though it's a shitty Pokemon. That's not even good during the main story of the game. It's not that difficult to get it. How do you get it? I think, I think you have to go out of your way to get it. I think... Cause I know... No, it's the... Uh, you know the uh, shadows on the bridges? They, they normally contain Ducklet. Okay, so not, not too hard to get. But... It's still a bad Pokemon with a boring design that isn't even good in the main story yeah. of the game. I forget Swanner exists. And that. I Sometimes I forget Luminion exists. <sighs> Bufalant. Should have been a Tauros evolution. Don't know why they <laughs> gave it an Afro. <laughs> because it's called Bufalant. It's coming from the term Bufont, which is a hairstyle. <laughs> but why did they give Tauros an Afro? Why? It's interesting. It's it, it, it really just seems like they wanted to give Ash an afro for, for one episode, but couldn't think of a way to do that. So they made a Pokemon that for some reason, if you wear an afro, they think of a Boofalant. 
Why is that even a thing? Ah, uh, that Pokemon just makes me rage. Anyway, I'll start off my list. Number 10. Pig Knight and Embor. I actually like Tepig a little bit. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much indifferent to most of the Gen 5 starters. Uh, other than Pig Knight and Embor, I don't really have any strong feelings either way for any of the starters. Uh, to the point where I, for one second, did consider putting Snivy on my favourite Pokemon list, but because of its um, snake losing its limbs whole kind of thing, where could that be a reference to either um, religion or actual real life evolution? But I just, but it just didn't make it just because it's just a little bit better than boring. But Pig Knight and, and Ember, I just think are ugly. Uh oh. What happened there? So yeah, I have no idea what happened there. There. What was you gonna say? Because I heard you take a breath there. I know. I think you actually quite like Pig Knight and Ember, don't you? Yeah, Ember and Pig Knight are my favourite of the trio of firefighting starters, easily. Hmm. My favourite is Inferno, then Blaziken, then. Miles below Blaziken, Pignite and Ember. It's just, it's just ugly to look at. Like, it's not too bad looking at it from behind, but looking at its face is just ugly. I think its face is really cool. I think it's ugly. Anyway, you're number 10. Yeah, this is going to be a surprise to you at least, but Mamoswine. Was not expecting that, to be honest. Mario is fine. Um, it's not the as best much as I love. Pokemon, but it is really good. I mean, I mean, they they did their best with what they had, really. As much as I love Ice types, he is for me one of the more least interesting ones. Yeah. And I don't think his design was that much of a good upgrade from Pyloswine. I think so. I think a phrase we're going to use a lot when talking about Gen Four is. They did the best with what they had. Yeah, this is only the star of my list, and, this, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's awful. So it's not going to go very far. It's, it's going to go way downhill from here. Yeah. Um, but I think Gen 4's biggest folly with his Pokemon is the fact that it did sort of choose like weaker Pokemon designs to base an evolution off. Like, they, they did the best with what they had, but what mm. they had weren't that good to begin with, to be honest, was it? No. And I think that was Gen 4's biggest folly, if you can even call it a folly, really. I can't easily. In my opinion, it's just like, it's just like, you're saying somebody tried too hard to make something that wasn't really that good better. I, I guess. didn't succeed amazingly, but didn't do it god awfully. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, my number nine. Um, the timber line. Just the entire line makes me uncomfortable to look at it. Just the giant <laughs> pulsating veins. They're just uncomfortable me, to look at. For me, it. It's okay on Gerda and Concorda. It's Timber that creeps me out. Yeah, I know. Because it's meant to be a child, yeah. and it has these disgusting veins as a child, which is gross. I think, I, no, for me, it just carries over for all of them, because it's not like the veins stay the same size as throughout the entire evolution. They get even bigger on Yes, but on have you seen where Timber Kong has them? Or... He has them on his head. Timber yeah. has them on his head. Yeah, and it's just uncomfortable to look at. That must be extremely painful for them. Yeah! I mean, it's... Oh my god, just... No, it, it just get. I just... It's just uncomfortable to look at. Right, my number nine. This is... 
This is the start of my hate train I'm expecting. Darkrai. Is this Darkrai with or without legs? Both. Fuck you. It's my least favourite mythical, but I did used what to love this Pokemon. It, I did used to love this Pokemon. It was my favourite Pokemon for quite a while. But then you got that avoided when you went online. No, it. I just... I, I got more into, like, um, looking at the the behind the scenes of how, like, name origins and design origins, yeah. and it just... It Isn't just Dark Eye his um, Japanese name, Dark Dark? That's what its name translates to, yeah. Yeah, Dark So And it just became bland and boring and uninteresting, so I just I, lost interest I, in it. Well, I, I still like It's better than, like, Victini, where... Um, it, well, ha most of the time you couldn't even get his signature move. At least Dark Eye comes with fucking Dark Void. I guess, but even then, you've got better options than Dark Void. Well, now you do, but before the nerf, you really didn't, because it, it uh, um, targeted multiple opponents, and they had a really high chance of putting them to sleep. It was 80. Yeah, relatively speaking, really high. I mean... There was no other sleeping status inflicting uh, move that had an 80% chance to put your target to sleep, unless you had compound eyes. Didn't sleep powder have a 90%? No, I don't think I had 90. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly where it was, but I, I think without compound eyes, it is quite low. I know, I know compound eyes actually takes it to about 90, 99%. Um, uh, you know, but I don't think it was 80%, I don't know if it was 80%, but I think Dark Void was at least one of the highest accuracy sleeping moves. It, higher than Hypnosis, which has now, uh, which now takes, uh, favour than it, unless you're in doubles, and then it's just, just like you pick and choose, um, Hypnosis or Dark Void, um, but at least it had a decent move that it came with, other than that, you know, then, like, we continue who didn't to you and have his signature move most of the time. Mm. Right, you're number eight. You're gonna hate me for this. God. Cryogonal. That's legitimately my second favourite Pokemon of I existence. Know. Oh, God. It's God. just got ugly design! It's amazing! It's ugly! Not ugly. Oh. I agree with you. It doesn't look like something that like it should exist. It looks like it's constantly in pain. It's, it's, it's literally born with a frown. And, it's, and it lives its entire life with a frown on its face. Made out of tears. Frozen tears. They're not tears, though. They look like it, though. No, it's it looks like a moustache. Yeah, it looks like a giant frown made out of frozen tears. Well, you had a horrible one for me on eight. I have a horrible one for you on eight. Drifblim. My favorite, well, probably my second fa favorite generation for a Pokemon. It looks stupid. I'm sorry, Drifblim is stupid looking. There's a lot of stupid looking Pokemon, especially in Generation 5. Like, Dragigigon. Drifloon was at least cute. Drifblim has nothing. Dragigigon has nothing. It doesn't, have, it doesn't even have a cute pre-evolution. Yet, they may, they may do it in the future, but... Yeah, but that I wouldn't don't. be a Gen 5 Pokemon, that would be a Gen Pokemon that was introduced in this generation. You know what I mean. Yeah, but... Oh, Drifloon was Drift Blim is the only Pokemon to get Stockpile, Minimize, and Baton Pass. Doesn't stop it looking dumb. But it makes it a hell of a lot of fun to use! Uh, if I had a pay for every time I I uh, saw a salty DC and we were using Drifloon, I would be a rich, rich man. That Pokemon has brought me no end of happiness. 
It was until Minimize got nerfed. And then Zemus were implemented. And then in Let's Go Peter and Eevee is not even in the game. Alright, your next Pokemon. You're not going to disagree with me here. Like, there's there's no way you're disagreeing with me. Watchdog. Watchdog. Oh god, I hate that thing. Yeah. Oh god. Just, do I need to say more? No, Watchhog, just the name Watchhog is just enough. Yes, just Watchhog. Everybody knows that. Nobody ever like, yeah, that, that is a bad Pokemon design. Hmm. Right, number seven. Empoleon. Yeah, I'm not a big... I, I love Plimplop. Like, Plimplop is bleeding adorable. Um, Teratrig is my favourite Gen 4 starter. Like, Teratrig is best starter. Yes. Um, of all time. Tied with uh, right. Squirtle and Fennekin. Right. I, um, and again, Plimplop is adorable. Yeah. Um, the me middle evolution is forgettable. Empoleon, kind of cool, but kind of lacking. Empoleon is actually my least favourite starter, well, well, water starter, besides Greninja. Yeah, but you absolutely love Greninja. True. It, um, I, I have something good to say about Empoleon. Its typing is you really good. Yeah. But that's literally the only thing it's got. It looks awkward, and mm. it doesn't really emphasise its typing in its design. If you didn't know it was steel type, would you assume it was steel type? Probably not, unless I recognise that the they had a trident on his face and tridents are usually made of metal. If I made that link, then I was like, could possibly be part steel. If anything, I would have said it looks more part ice than anything. Yeah, I would have, uh, water ice would have been a good typing for it as well. Um, because it is literally an Emperor Penguin. Mm. Um, my number six. You're probably not going to be happy about this one. Gabodor. It's I mean, I like me. Gabodor. It's not one of my favourite Pokemon. I know, but I, I like know Gabodor. you do have a fondness for it. <coughs> mm. It's just ugly. But that's the whole point. Yeah, but it, just because the point of it is to be ugly doesn't make it not ugly and hard to look at. Although That's I feel the entire sorry for any um, uh, swirl legs that come within 50 feet of a gabo, gabo door. Like, right. Uh, gabo door must just like, be the enemy of all swear lexes. <laughs> Anyway, Alright, my, my number six. Jingling! Uh, that does, that's not really a bad... It's not that bad. The most useless baby Pokemon in existence. There was no reason for Chimeco to get a baby. It was underrated, sure, but giving it a baby wasn't the best idea to try and make it popular. It well, just made it even no, more here's the thing. By giving it a baby... They could put that baby earlier on in the game without it being broken, meaning that you could get a Chimeco a lot earlier on, a lot easier. Meaning that that Pokemon could, within theory, have gone up in popularity because people say, oh, there's a Chingling there, might as well catch it, add it onto my team, and then people would use that in their team, making uh, Ch Chimeco more popular. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember where Chingling was found. I don't. I don't have all these in my memory. It's, you don't even get it until after, after like, the Eterna Gym. Which one is that again? Second. Eh, not bad. It's about a quarter of the way through the game, and people are going to have something better by then. Well, no, I really have a uh, Steel and or Psychic type. Like, maybe a better Psychic type if you got an Abra. But I really don't think you're going to have a better Steel or Psychic type at that point in the game. Steel? Why steel? Time Echo's power steel, isn't it? No, they're both pure psychic. Why? Because oh. they're not oh. made of metal. No, they're, they're based off bell. Hold on. 
I have to double check this quickly. I have Bulbapedia on my phone. I think you're thinking of Bronzor and Bronzo. Oh no. I'm, I'm like 80% sure. Hold on, no, so. try making it based on wind chimes. Chim. Chimeco, Pokemon. Chimeco. Huh. I could have sworn that they were psychic steel because wind chimes are metal. Not, not the ones that they're based on. Huh. The ones that they're based on are made of glass. Why psychic then? Mm -hmm. Probably because of the uh, spiritual essence that um, Japanese wind chimes have. Mm. Okay. Um, well, again, unless you've got Abra, you're not going to have a better psychic type, are you? Chimeco isn't that great to use, to be fair. But, again, if you, is, if you didn't get an Abra, which some people can be asked with an Abra, and, or just wanted to uh, use something else but an Abra, then you're not really going to get a better psychic type at, at that point in the game, are you? True, but I still don't like it. Hmm. Yeah, right. I still think it's Number five. Vanillux. Oh, boy. I just think the idea of an ice cream Pokemon is stupid and how they implemented, like, um, they pre-existed to actual ice cream. It's just like, but, but why though? Like, what was the evolutionary advantage for looking good delicious? Like, there's weird evolution, there's weird evolutions and there's evolutions that are directly contradictory to survival of fear. So it's like, you don't evolve to look nicer, unless you're trying to poison somebody. You evolve to look gross and this, you know, not edible. You, you evolve to look not edible, or if if not that, you evolve to run away. Yet, Vanillux doesn't do either of that. They're slow, pretty, they're pretty slow, and uh, they've got no real power to fight back, and they've evolved to look fucking delicious. Actually, no. They are actually icicles that have happened happened to look like ice cream. It's it's no, not it's evolution. Within the law of the games, um, people actually based ice cream off them. Yes, but that's only because they happened to end up looking like ice cream. It's that wasn't. Stupid. That's not the evolutionary design that they it's were going for. Still stupid, and they still look fucking delicious. So everything's gonna eat them. Nobody's going to eat pure snow. It still looks like I eat it. I wouldn't. Unless it was yellow. Well, obviously. <laughs> anyway, you're number five. I, I just don't like the design. I think it's stupid. Palkia! It looks dumb, it's typing it's dumb, and everything about it is dumb. This typing isn't dumb. Yes, it is. Why is it's it not... water type? I don't know, but it's not dumb typing. Like, what what other, what type would you say best represents space? So, psychic. Dragon psychic. We we already have a bunch of them though. Looks better. It's, it makes more sense than a bloody dragon water type. Yeah, but well, would you want to know a fucking psychic dragon? Yes, because it makes sense. No, I don't want to know a latias and latios on my hands. This one can't fly, it's fine. Oh wait, yeah it can. It doesn't show to be fly that often though. Oh Christ. I just look at my number four. Stunfisk. Hey, Stunfisk is cool. It's fucking terrible. It's cool. It's, the wor it's one of the worst designs that Pokemon of all time. How? It's based on a flatfish. What are you going to do with a flatfish? Still, just because they chose a bad 
something bad to base their design off, and then they just made and they just made a fucking terrible design based off something that wasn't going to make a good design in the first place. Doesn't mean that that Pokemon just gets a free pass for being ugly, useless, and uh, fucking stupid. I don't think it's any of those things, but okay. It's all of those things. And there's a retarded typing. Ground electric is a cool typing. What's wrong with I ground electric? Water. And this is the opposite problem with Palkia. He was like, the problem with Palkia, why is it water? The problem with this, why is it not water? Because ground and electric make more sense than water. And they live in water! In real life and in the video game, they live in water. No. They live in marshland, which is mainly mud. Mainly water. Because it's mud is water. dead and water. It's... Yes, but wouldn't it be more boring if it was ground water? Well, no, make it electric water. One of the rarer dual typings in the games. And an actually good typing. So it lives in places that would be super effective for it. What? If it was water electric and it lived in mud, what was the, what would be the point of it being electric? Well, it uh, doesn't like the actual flatfish it's based on like have like literal electric things on it. That's a good question. Why is it electric in the first place? I think it's more to do with um, it's. I think it's. I think flatfish have a similar thing. You know, like what hammerhead sharks have. Yeah. I think they have something similar to that, but I'm not entirely sure. So the more we just talk about it, the worse it gets. I still think it's cool. It's it's ugly, it's dumb, it's got an awful typing. Uh, no, just no. I don't think kids know about this Pokemon. Your number four. Right, is... my number four. This is, this is also an electric Pokemon, and people are going to crucify me, but... Luxray! Eh, I don't care much about that because I like. I love Shanks, it's adorable, but looks like I could take it or leave it. I honestly don't understand what's so good about Looks Like. Its design is mediocre. It's really hard to use in a playthrough, considering its best stab move is until like is until like level forty three or something. And by the time I by that time I would have ditched it and found a better electric type. Mm. Like even Raichu. No, Raichu isn't the best for electric type. Like you got, you have to give it that. It's better than Raichu, because with at least that you don't with a, with a looks like you don't, at least you don't have to uh, evolve it with a stone. Where with Raichu, with Pikachu into Raichu, you do. And until you get that stone, Pikachu is fucking awful. Even uh, looks like without a good stab move is better than any Pikachu. I'd rather have stab moves than have nothing at all until forty three. Pikachu barely has anything at all that does damage. Like, you, your only choice for Pikachu is get a light ball or Thunderstone. Because Pikachu on its own is fucking useless. Yes, but by the time you get a Pikachu, you're near enough at the exact same place where you can get a Thunderstone. Yeah, but by then you probably just have a uh, Luxray with a stab. No, because it's before third gen. Hey, you can really get a Thunderstone that early. I think you can get Thunderstone in Veilstone Department Store. Hold on, let me look this up. I think, anyway. I would uh, assume you would be able to. Uh... That would actually be quite good if you could actually get um, stones out early in Gen 4. What well, oh, you can get one in Salacion Ruins in Platinum. Okay. You can get one on the Salacion Ruins in Platinum, which is on the way to the fourth gym. Yeah. In the course of these games. Uh, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Cost not available. Sell price 10.50. So you can't. No, but Salacion Ruins is still pretty early. Salacion. Oh. 
I'm sure you can find Pikachu in the trophy garden. How do you spell Celestion? S O L A. S O L A. C E O N. C E. Yeah, trophy garden. And ruins. Yeah, you can get tro oh, trophy garden. Oh, that area. Yeah, so you can get Pikachu in the in the trophy garden. Go down to Salacion Ruins, and then do the fourth and and get Thunderstone. Thunderstone on the rocket in the dead end. The down the top right, bottom left, top right, top left, and then bottom right you to stairwells hidden. Mm. Yeah, but by then you're not going to have the item finder, are you? You don't need to. You could probably just well, find it randomly. Well, you don't need to, but going if you're uh, just going through the game normally without prior knowledge of the game, you're not really going to know it's there, are you? Also, it's in a bit of a complex uh, layout. Like you're going to have to go, you're going to have to remember to go uh, down, then top right, top left. Uh, Top right, top left, then bottom right stairwell, and then know exactly where it's hidden. I so, guess, still, essentially you can't like get that without prior knowledge of the game until you get the item finder. Dowsing machine add-on for your Poketch. Also, Poketch was the best feature in any game, Pokemon game to ever exist, a powerful Pokemon walking behind you. Anyway, you're number three. The pans and simmies, just all of them, just lump all of them into this uh, section because they could make up. They shouldn't be anywhere near the list, list, but you know. Pardon? Pardon? They shouldn't be anywhere near this list, but you know. They're fucking awful. Like, I no, they're not. The they're all great. Of, uh, see no evil, <laughs> hear no evil, speak no evil. That is a good idea. Horribly executed! They're shit in battle to the point where uh, Simicia <clears throat> can't one shot a four times effective Pokemon with its stab. That's how bad they are. They weren't designed to be amazing battlers. I didn't know. They, they're not even average. They're god awful battlers. Like most no. Pokemon, most usable, not God awful pieces of shit Pokemon can a one shot a four times super effective stab move. Simi Seer can not. And if these Pokemon were an optional part of the game, then uh, yeah, they, they wouldn't be long on this list because they're optional. You don't have to get them. But no, they're compulsory in black and white and black and white too to get these Pokemon. To uh, battle uh, the uh, the uh, what well, the grass. See, fire this is where you're misremembering black and white too. You do not. You don't even find black. You don't even find them until halfway through the game. That, and they're then, wild. You then don't they have to get them. How bad they were in black and white too. So it's like, yeah, no. Everybody fucking hates these Pokemon because they're horrible. No, they were just in the same place that they were. And shitty in battle. So we're probably not going to make anybody get them. Because we know people already hate them, and if we make them use them again, they're probably just going to quit the game there and then. That's how bad they were. No, they're in exactly the same place as you could find them world in black and white, so yeah, they, their location didn't compulsory. change. They just gave you one at the beginning to help with the first gym. That's all they gave it to you for. You just said they're not compulsory. So you don't have to get them. No, so you could choose to, to, to not use it. How much people hated these Pokemon. So, so they, uh, in the, in Black and White 2, they made it so they went compulsory. They made it they so weren't they compulsory in Black and White. You could have chosen not to use it. No, you. they literally won't let you in the gym until you get one of those three. Yes, but then you could just put it in the box and not use it. Still, you have to go out of your way to go and get it. At some point yes, in the time, in the time through a black and white playthrough, you have to have at least one of their dex entries. They are ugly, they are stupid, they are horrible in battle, and they are a waste of time in black and white. But you still don't have to use them. 
But you still have to go out of your way to get to them. And? It's still it's a part of the story. Like, oh, now I have to spend uh, five minutes uh, going to uh, go, go to this NPC character, get this Pokemon, go through the whole uh, like trade animation. Well, actually, is it a trade animation or is it just a gift? I think it's no, a it's gift. a gift. So you have to talk to him, you know, go through all that text, then go back to the Pokemon okay. Center, dump it into the PC, then go back to the gym just because they wanted to add a Pokemon with this gimmick. Generation 6 did this a hell of a lot better with giving you one of the original Kanto starters. But because Generation 5 was so hung up on being a soft reboot, they just decided to shittily shit out V6 Pokemon and shove them in your face. I still think they're really good Pokemon, they so nothing really will ever change that for me. They have literally no redeeming factors about them. Simi Sage is at least the best designed. Being the best of some of the worst Pokemon ever is not something to brag about. That's like saying, uh, um, this unknown is slightly better than this other unknown. They're still shitty, but... No, because that's comparing it to the same species. These are completely different species. And they're still shit. Not and they're to me, still they're not. pretty much comparable to each other. I'll, I'll give you that... Um, uh, that uh, Simicia is by far the worst, not only in design, because they literally just put poop on his head, but in battle as well. And it's, pre it's pretty much impossible for any Pokemon to be literally worse than the Simicia. In every way, shape, or form, like Simi here, it's just like the ultimate example of how wrong you can make it. You can design a Pokemon. And the other well, two, and I that, hated your the last other two are still extremely shitty. Well, considering how much I hated your last entry, number three, Giratina. Which one? Both. I hate both of them. Fuck you. It's... Uh, Giratina is literally my least favourite legendary of all time. Its design is bad. No, it's it looks not. bad. Its typing is... No, its, it's typing doesn't look like... Its typing doesn't seem what it looks like. It should be Ghost Bug. It's not bug? a dragon. Why the fuck Bug? Why it looks like a centipede. It's a giant floating dragon. Like, it's I, a centipede! I, I, the ghost doesn't make the most sense, but it's more than definitely a dragon. Like, <laughs> no! Dragon it's a centipede! Would, uh, would be more, I would argue, would be more um, better for its origin form. Maybe altered there could be um, ground. But bug does not make any fucking sense unless you uh, take uh, the fact that uh, altered form has six legs. Well, that's the closest link to it being a fucking bug there is. It looks like a centipede. No, it doesn't! Does a centipede launch a dragon uh, energy out of its mouth that opens like that? It just doesn't look at all like a dragon to me. It looks like one of the least dragons. And centipedes fly? That's how much I centipedes don't fly. I could be wrong, it could be a That's very weird thing. That's why it's a ghost bug. Fly, but for the most part, centipedes don't fly. Why it's a ghost bug? No, dragon, it's definitely a dragon. It flies around like a, a dragon, like a Chinese mythological dragon. Not like a it western dragon, look like a dragon, a Chinese dragon. It doesn't look like a dragon to me, at all. It, it doesn't look like a western dragon, but it looks a hell of a lot like a J Japanese dragon. Like maybe Japanese dragons are a little bit longer, but its uh, design is definitely influ heavily influenced by Japanese dragons and ch Chinese yeah, dragons. Yeah, it just doesn't look like one to me. Whatever, you're just even, wrong. On even Bagon looks more like a dragon than this thing. No, it doesn't. Anyway, number two, Terrakion. 
I just don't like his design. It's just no, I, I agree with you, Atarakia. It's just really bad design. Your number two. Again, you're gonna really hate me, but Inferno. Yeah, it's my favorite fire fighting style, but I'm not too keen on the fire fighting period. Like, yeah, it's my favorite of them, but I'm not keen on them in the first place. So, yeah. It's my second least favorite fire starter behind Charizard, and then people should know by now that I completely hate Charizard. Yeah, I really don't care about Infernape. Like, yeah, um, Infernape like design, for me has a really medium design. Like, it's not one of those Pokemon the fact that, that I'm going to. Fire fighting a second time. It's not one of those Pokemon I'm going to really defend that much. It's like, yeah, I like it. The fact that it was fire fighting a second time. For me, it wasn't that great of a typing the first time. Ember, are you fighting for the third time? I like Ember. There's a difference there. It's still firefighting. You can't say that in yes, Fair Naples but... Land because it was the second firefighting when the third firefighting is one of your favourite po starter Pokemon. But what? How much of a difference is there between Infernape style and Brazikin style? Not much. Well, you ha you actually have the fact that um, Infernape is a fire monkey, which I could be wrong here, but I isn't it based off the monkey from the journey to the west? Who was yes, actually that is a fire who actually controlled but... fire, and uh, and would if you concentrated it into a Pokemon, it would probably be a firefighting Pokemon because he had a staff, and then he would uh, you, you know use the staff and fight with it uh, like a martial artist. And they manipulate fire. There's literally no reason for Ember to be fire type unless you're talking about like uh, roast pork, which is fucking delicious. But Ember also does come from this same thing because it's based on Zubaji, the um, the pig from the same si same story. Does he control fire though? Um, I don't think it's the fire bit that comes from it. It's the fighting bit that comes from. Yeah, but why why is he fire? I I wouldn't mind a pure like I I don't like it's like I I'm not too bothered about the fighting part. It's the fact that it's fire fighting. Like if they could have made the Ember a not starter and just have it like pure fighting type. It would better than be it would be better than like Sork or Throw. Um, yeah, but, but what would they have Tepi as then? As it's pre evolution, just like. Make that entire line something different and make a new fire starter, fire starter line. Yes, but Tepig is pure fire. What would they change it to? Just pure, pure fighting. fighting. Just have them all pure fighting. I honestly think that Tepig would probably be normal if it weren't fire. Or normal fighting, yeah, whatever that. Or no, normal, just not fire fighting. Or just wait for at least one or two more generations until people have gotten the whole fire fighting out of their system. Like, everybody was okay with Blaziken. People were on, they're just like, okay, uh, Infernape's kind of cool, but we're getting kind of tired about fire fighting. And then Ember, and it was like, fuck's sake, stop doing the fire fighting! Like, Ember probably caused more, a lot more people to hate Generation 5, or at least caused a lot of uh, Generation 5's hate. Like, if uh, they didn't have a fire fighting, then Generation 5 would uh, probably have not received uh, uh, as much hate, like it would still receive the shit ton of hate, but not as much. Hmm. Alright, you're number one. Kylum, black and white form. Just overly designed and ugly, and it hurts my eyes to look at them. And it only uh, makes it worse by the fact that its white form is actually quite good and competitive, which means you see it everywhere, and what's the one thing you don't want to about, want about that Pokemon is to see it. This is this last one is just going to put the nail in the coffin for everybody watching this now. Hmm. My least favorite Pokemon from the Sinnoh region is Garchomp. Yeah, that doesn't surprise it's me. My least favorite pseudo legendary of all time. I think its design is is meh at best, and it's besides its attack, its stat distribution is disgusting. Disgustingly but good. It's if it if it wasn't for Cynthia having one, 
it wouldn't be as anywhere near as popular. Well, no, it would still be quite popular because it does have really good stats. Um, I also mentioned this with Haxorus. Haxorus has um, similar stats, but more, you know, in like attack and speed, making it by stats technically better. But because of Garchomp's dual typing, um, giving it more resistance and super effective hits, it makes uh, Garchomp more seen and competitive. Yes, but the fact that Cynthia had it as her ace means it was propelled straight into the top 10 popular Pokemon because Cynthia had one. And because Cynthia is known as one of the best trainers in the game, mm. therefore, because she has one, it has to be amazing. Yeah. Which I disagree with. Um, I, I do agree that Cynthia having one, because she is a re ex she is literally the most popular um, champion of all time, um, that, pro that probably did help put Garchomp's... Um, you know, popularity outside of uh, competitive, but inside of competitive, Cynthia had no uh, um, effect on Garchomp's uh, popularity inside of competitive. Like, outside of competitive, yeah, she was a big part of, probably a big part of Garchomp's popularity. If it was just because of how good it was in competitive, it would have been, yeah, we use it, but we don't really care for much for it, like a lot of Pokemon that people use. Mm. But because Cynthia had it, it automatically has to be good, and people have to like it because she had it. Mm. Yeah. So your basically your point is that you don't like it because everybody else loves it, and you don't get why. Well, you get why, but you don't like why. Well, yeah, because I think Cynthia's awful. Oh yeah, because I hate Cynthia. Um, didn't Iris have a Haxorus? Hmm. Didn't Iris have a Haxorus? Yes, she did. Well, that just shows how little people liked Iris. Her Haxorus never really gained that much popularity from her using it. Like, there'll be a few people who liked it because she used it, but... You never really see people talk about Haxorus like that. That just shows how more impactful Cynthia was than Iris. I guess, but it was... It was mainly because she did appear in the story, but I don't think she needed to. She was fine just being the champion and just standing there and doing nothing. Hmm. Yeah, but I think but the, this reason, is the, character I think analysis the reason of Cynthia. why people love Cynthia so much is because she was legitimately a challenge for most people. Um, because they went into it blind, and they were like, oh, I'll just like, go through it. And it was one of the few times where... Um, Pokemon fans were like, this is a really hard challenge, beating Cynthia if, you, if you're not prepared. Um, and that, that even if you are prepared, it can sometimes be quite a difficult challenge um, and cause people to go back and grind. And I think that's why it also left such a big impact, because it was uh, one of their stronger po strongest Pokemon and obviously caused a lot of people to have to go back and grind, so a lot of people just grew admiration for Cynthia and her Garchomp because they just out, uh, you know, she just bested her so many times. I guess, but this isn't really a an character analysis for Cynthia. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that, that, that's the list. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, right now I'm going to go talk about a guy about a Elgato HD60 capture card. Um, bye. Bye. Post your com opinions down in the comment section. Bye bye.